and I've been through all of them. You know, uh, 1990, uh, excuse me, 1900 was uh, released in uh, in, uh, in 2000. Why? Because this the fiber channel sand was coming around, and that was uh, the the architecture that was able to really connect all these. Uh, uh, multitude of servers to one storage device and we kept evolving from there. And that put the stake down in terms of SAN performance, didn't it? Exactly. And then you've evolved oh, that a, with innovations around it, uh, uh, virtualization and attaching third-party devices. Correct. It's a, it's a continuous dozens. evolution of something that is generated by the user. What they are looking for, what is their problem, what we are trying, what can we help them. Rather than look at ourselves, we look at them as our guide, our direction. So, so how about uh, for the customers out there? What's what's available and when? I mean, things like you get mainframe support and <laughs> tiering. And do you know all this offhand? You know, and, I, mean, we, I started off saying yeah. this is Itachi. Yeah. We do not. We tend not to do slide well. What we what you saw on the on the on the, on the stage right now is available. So. The mainframe support is there. Clearly, we okay. have we have announced that we will uh, provide a uh, dynamic tiering and dynamic provisioning for the mainframe. It will be in the second in the second version. So six months from now, it okay. will be there. Right now, we have delivered uh, we have delivered um, uh, the, racic, the excuse me the USB platform with uh, dynamic tiering with VAI integration. Although it will follow in, uh, in about 45, 60 days, we have some internal things. Um, there are steps, a milestone that we have in there to, to provide fiber channel over Ethernet. Uh, that was an intentional shift of priority. We didn't see the market being ready for that. We decided to do that six months from now. They're not, customers aren't screaming for FCOE, Absolutely but you know it's not. coming. It's, you've got to be there. Exactly. So yeah. six months from now, the same machine that you bought today can be fit with that. Okay. And, uh, there will be a second version of HDT. We are keeping evolving on that, but everything we have said uh, on the stage is there. So sub sub lawn tiering, sub lawn tiering, tiering as well. Is, is, no, you didn't. Talk, did you talk about ham today? Is, is ham not uh, We available? didn't talk about ham. Is part of that it is also available in the next ninety days. And that's going to be part of the. I would presume part of the scale out. Absolutely, piece of it. it's part of that. Okay, so part of the scale out and migration as so well. So everything we time. saw today is near term, either available today or within, or the, within say, the, the next, next six uh, months. Ninety days to one hundred eighty days. Roberto, the, the Jack was up there talking about obviously a lot of great messaging. We, we loved his uh, performance. But one of the things he mentioned is the business model shift from the past five to seven years. And specifically what I wanted to ask is the software. Obviously yes. everyone's talking software. Software is the new IP that's driving the, the data, which be, is also the intellectual property of these big companies. Data is not a, not a, a storage asset in the sense of data recovery, mm -hmm. but it's actually critical to business, using the data to, as, to innovate on. So talk about What's different now, and what's your vision within the product platform around the role of software? Well, software, software has to provide that uh, uh, ease of use. is the first uh, is the first ob uh, objective. You don't have uh, uh, an expanding uh, staff available in the data center anymore. Everyone I talk to, and believe me, I, I talk to hundreds of customers. Everyone comes out with the same. They look around and says, "We are the same that we were five years ago." So the first step that the software has to uh, uh, to achieve is uh, more automation, a uh, more control automation, a better understanding of what's going on, because uh, a user user is loath to to operate in the dark and uh, not knowing what's going on. That is the first step. The second step, obviously, with uh, the, this expanding amount of, of information that we have there, is uh, being able to track it. You know, I was able to keep track of 10 years ago of what I had on my PC. I can't do today without without certain tool. I have too much things in uh, uh, available, and that is all my personal, just my personal information. Think about an enterprise uh, enterprise wide when you are uh, you are thousands and thousands of people that, that generate information. That is where the software comes in place. So software, the manager, discovery, manager, the discovery, the allocation, and uh, really the. Uh, all the automatic provisioning. You don't have to spend time to manually uh, uh, provision resources. That is, uh, we're, we are seeing that everywhere. It has to be, is that also in the on the, in, on the future innovation as you guys move forward and innovate, you're known for product leadership. How much is going to come from software versus hardware? Uh, definitely, it's uh, it's mostly coming from uh, from the software side. I when I you know I. As I said, I done uh, I done this uh, uh, product introduction for uh, quite some time. Dave, you were among the first one, and I keep saying that hardware is a reactive proposition right now. Uh, what is the technology that is available? You adapt that and you integrate with some of your uh, your IP. The major efforts is all on software, 
uh, whether it is embedded software like uh, dynamic tiering or is uh, uh, host based software or is something in between you know, uh, uh, appliance based software all the management monitoring uh, uh, provisioning part is done is done outside the box but all the engine the data moving engine capability is all internal all the innovation right exactly yeah, so but it's still a software development software evolution so on that is the key so on that note you know we've been hearing the themes all across the past six months about agility and speed you know from the business you know model perspective and also technology so performance speed agility yeah. Application developers, it's more complex for them. You, in the old days, it was like, okay, the application guys do their thing, they got their back-end data, they go to the network guys, they had them all siloed out, and they all, mm -hmm. all kind of shot bullets at each other, and they got along, drank beer together. But now, now to be fast as a developer, you really got to abstract away the hardware and the network. Where is that going? Because in app developers, they're not going away. They're actually increasing on an increasing rate. In the enterprise, and guys doing you know, iTunes and I, iPad apps. So what, what's the future hold for these guys? Is it going to be completely black boxed for them in terms of storage management? Uh, that is what we are trying to, we are trying to, uh, to provide them. Make, make it, it invisible. Make it, easier. Make it invisible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like we're saying, why do you have to worry about uh, what, it, what the amount of space that you have available, as long as it's uh, available? Just, uh, just uh, uh, trying, we are trying to remove at least one layer of, uh, uh, between, uh, between the storage administration and the application administration. Just make it transparent or invisible, like Dave said. So, That's Roberto, what are the challenges? Hold on, Dave. One, one more follow-up question. What's the challenges that enterprises have as you talk to them about the applications and having these silos? Is it easy as kind of new sheet of paper? Is it? Is, oh, they have to kind of migrate. What steps do they take? No, I think I think it will be it will be quite transparent. Is is mostly uh, taking away internal processes and procedures. Uh, uh, within an enterprise, then uh, then the product the product can uh, can really deliver that uh, transparently. So we're here with Roberto Basilio, Vice President of, of Storage Product uh, Management at Hitachi Data Systems. Roberto, congratulations on this announcement. Uh, terrific! It was great to have you in the cube. We'd love to have you back as an alum at some point in time. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, great to see you. I always great. to learn as well. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for coming.